In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the incidence of tax and who pays more for a tax, the consumer or the producer. So to begin, let's look at the typical market equilibrium diagram that you have here. Um, fairly straightforward, supply sloping up, demand curve sloping downwards, and we can see that that's the price and quantity at um, the equilibrium. And, and we could also say that this equilibrium is allocatively efficient. To review, the effect of a tax is essentially to say that, all, especially an indirect tax on sales, for example, is to say that the effective price that suppliers would, would have to accept is higher by the value of the tax. So we're saying that this is a shift upwards in the supply curve, which means that we have a lower equilibrium quantity and a higher equilibrium price as a result of the tax. To review the effect of a subsidy, a subsidy basically being the government paying producers to produce a product, um, what this does means that the effective price that the, the, the producers can sell it at is going to be lower than it would be um, with, without any intervention. So therefore we see a shift down the supply curve to reflect this, this, this new lower price um, which, which they can provide it for which will mean that as a result of the subsidy, we will have a, a um, higher equilibrium quantity and a lower equilibrium price than we had before. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into a bit more detail about who's actually paying for this tax um, when it's imposed on the market. So to begin with, let's have a look at then if we say we have a tax again. So we've shifted the supply curve up and we now can see that the old equilibrium price and quantity is going to change. We've got a new quantity and a new higher price. This time I'm going to have a look and to sort of distinguish what's actually happening at that quantity level. Because we can say that PC is the price paid by the consumer. That's, that's the consumer's price that they're paying where the new supply curve meets the demand. However, I'm going, to, I'm going to also add in that at this quantity here, the original supply curve is what the suppliers are effectively getting um, after the tax. And so at quantity 2, this PS is going to be the price paid to the supplier. So there are actually two different prices now. PC, the price paid to the consumer, and PS, the price pay, paid to the supplier. What this means is, is that an area of consumer surplus, which no longer exists, which used to be from the consumer, is now part of the tax, because this tax is going to be an area of this entire square here. That's going to be the value of the tax. This blue area used to be consumer surplus, now it is part of the tax. This orange area here used to be producer surplus in the old equilibrium, and is now part of the tax. So when you look at this, it says, this rectangle here represents the tax revenue generated by the government. Um, the top half is revenue from the consumer, the transfer of consumer welfare, and the bottom half is, go is government revenue from the supplier, which is the transfer of producer surplus. And we can also identify that there's a triangle here, this green triangle. This used to be under the old equilibrium, either consumer surplus or producer surplus. That area is no longer going towards society welfare, and so because at Q2 we're not selling that many, and so this whole area is now just lost welfare, and so that triangle is deadweight loss. Lost which, welfare which used to exist, but which is now gone. Now, to really analyze this fully, what we we'll want to do is is think about elasticity and the tax. So what does it look like if we have inelastic demand curves and we're taxing an inelastic product? So let's put on there an inelastic demand curve, say something that looks like this. We've got our original equilibrium twice, price and quantity. Put the tax on there and you can see that the price that the consumer pays has gone up by quite a bit from P1 to PC. The price that the, that the supplier receives hasn't gone down by very much. You can explain this by saying that who's actually paying for this tax? Is it the producer or the consumer? 
And if we put the, the analysis that we have from our last slide onto here, we can see that the blue curve, the, sorry, the blue area of this tax, so this is the area of the tax here, and the blue bit is the majority of the area. And so that means that most of the revenue from this tax is paid for by the consumer. This blue area used to be, um, used to be consumer surplus. It is now government revenue. The orange area is paid for by the supplier. And as you can see, with an inelastic product, most of that revenue is actually produced and given by the consumer rather than the, than the supplier. Um, and you can see, yeah, a relatively small area is paid for by suppliers. If we have elastic demand, oops, we would want to draw a demand curve which is less steep. So we could draw something like this. Original equilibrium price and quantity. And so we put the tax on the product, shifts the supply curve upwards. We now look to where our government revenue is. Our government revenue is this box here again at the new quantity. And I should also mention that, remember, the government revenue is the new quantity times the amount of the tax per product. So we're saying that this is an indirect sort of per unit tax, which means that the amount that we shift the supply curve up by is actually going to be the new government revenue. And we can see again that the blue area here is the, is the proportion of the revenue which is paid by consumers, and the red area is the, is, is the part of the revenue which is paid for by suppliers. So with an elastic demand curve, most of the tax is actually paid for by the supplier, which makes sense because an elastic demand curve is if you, um, if you raise the price, then you're going to see a massive drop in the quantity. And so, um, so the consumers aren't going to actually pay that much more, but the, the, but the suppliers are going to receive quite a bit less. So the welfare effects of a subsidy. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stop it there, and you can watch that in the next video.